So we're here today at Packington Summers on Siblings Lake on Lake B, which is your typical snake lake. And we're going to look how we'd approach a typical snake lake in winter. So choosing the right areas to fish in your peg in winter is really, really important. Fish aren't as active as they are in the summer. They're not going to actively come and sit, seek some bait that you're feeding. So when I'm setting up, I'm looking to see if there's any fish topping, because that's probably going to be the area that I'm going to start in, because they're not going to be overly moving. So today we've plumbed up across in three foot, and I felt a few fish there with the plummet. So that's going to be the area that we're going to start in, start on some bread, and then look to change to feeding some maggots and some ground bait. The other main area that I'm going to fish in is down the middle. And that when I'm fishing down the middle, I'm looking for that clean spot that they're used to feeding on that dinner plate, if you like. Um, a lot of people like feeding bait out of the hand. And generally, in front of every peg, there's a, there's a clean spot that's, say, six, six inches deeper. And the fish naturally want to feed on that spot, um, just because it's a bit cleaner and easier to pick them off when they're wanting to feed later in the session. So they're the two key areas that we're looking to fish in today. So kicking off the peg, as we've already talked about, I've, I've plumbed up my peg, I've seen the odd fish roll over by the, the, the old reeds over there, and I've felt a couple with my plummet. So first area of the peg we're going to fish is we're going to have a little explore, a little dob about with some bread. It's not going to hurt the peg in any way. Um, so we can just gauge what everyone else is doing as well. If people are catching feeding, we can look at changing a little bit sooner. But it's always a safe bet to go in and bread and just gauge gauge what other people are doing. Rig wise, we've got a short cut with eight to 10 slick in it, the green slick. We're fishing in about three foot of water um, and I'm looking to start eight to 10 inches off the bottom. Six, 016 power micron main line, so nice durable main line, we can have any issues. And then I've got a 012 power micron hook length with an MCX1 in a size 18, um, a six inch hook length and then a 0.1 DS dubber with three number 10s just strung out through the rig um, so I can get a nice natural fall on that bread. Um, and then a decent lash above the uh, Dacron to the float just so within this cleared water we're not gonna have any issues spooking any fish. So I've gone in, I've had a dub about, I've pricked a couple of fish, there's clearly some fish in my peg, but for whatever reason, bread doesn't seem right today. So I'm gonna do a bit of a, a hybrid between feeding and dubbing, if you like. We're gonna feed some ground bait, but we're gonna tap it in loose. So the only food that they can actually eat is gonna be my maggot or my pinky hook bait. So the, the attraction of the ground bait is gonna hopefully pull the fish into the peg. Um, they'll come down, follow my nice rig through the water, my nice salt rig through the water and my maggot or pinky hook bait will be nicely presented on the bottom and we should get a nice positive bite. So the makeup of the rig itself, we've got 8 to 10 slick in a short kit again, 016 power micron line, um, a little flexi put on that I can tuck a little bit of ground bait in, a 0 0.15 um, XL carbon in three and a half foot of water with four number 10 shot just strung out through the rig, six inches of 010 power micron with it, MXC5 in a size 18, so a nice fine wire hook that can get away with, say, fishing double pinky or a maggot in a pinky or even double pinky um, to get that nice natural fall through the rig and uh, for these crafty F1s, hopefully, taking my hook bait. So we've been fishing for an hour, hour and a half now. So we started on bread, it weren't quite right. So I changed to just tapping in a little bit of ground bait and almost falling them with that, that cloud of bait and just my maggot hook bait being the only thing they could eat, which was 
which was right to start with, but who ended up getting too many in my peg and some daft indications with them wanting to come up from the cloud because I didn't think it would be quite as good as what it has been. So I'm just fighting the wind. Um, so I've just changed to nuggeting and a little bit of ground bait, so probably little finger, fingernail fall. And I'm into another F1 there now. Not massive fish, but I thought it'd chuck. That one's just come up. So we're just going to restart our peg. So just swapping between, but it's fine. Either a maggot and a pinky or double maggot. And it's important as well just to feed eight or ten maggots down the middle for a line that we're going to fish later in the day when that light starts to change and they want to come and eat some bait. So we'll ship her back out, just tap that ball in from a little bit of a height and it's really important to put your rigging properly, it's no good just letting it go down like a pile of, pile of lead balloons and falling really unnaturally because the fish aren't going to take that hook bait so it's a case of laying it in from the side and then just waiting for everything to straighten up and just dropping a last say six inch with a float out of the water and then it should be a nice clean indication and then straight away nice little f1 we'll try and actually land this one this time and when i've got back to a top kit he can just do what he likes on that soft elastic and we'll cut the 10 maggots down the middle again and it's just about repeating the, repeating the process. Lively little fish. I say not massive, but bites, plenty of bites to be had. And that one's proper, proper nailed it. So we'll just disgorge him. Doesn't want to open his mouth. Come on, Mr. F1. There we go, nice little stocky fish. Clean that bit of slime off the line. I'm going to go for a red maggot and a fluoro pinky. Get him the right way round. Little nugget of ground bait. And whilst we're on the subject of ground bait, we have got today a mixture of Amino Original milled expander from Dynamite and the amino, amino Black milled expander as well. Um, I've just mixed these 50-50 so they're matching the colour of the lake bed so it's not going to stand out and be a, a real like, natural colour to them, it's just going to blend in with the bottom. Um, the, later in, the later on it goes in the year and the clearer the lake bed the more black I put into it. Um, but it's a real versatile mixer so I started tapping it in loose just like almost over wetted so it's nice and heavy um, and we just changed to indication straight away just uh, changed to a little nugget ball in the little flexi pots and so getting a bite of chuck nice day's winter sport so just being fluent taking your time and just building middle peg again bait of 10 maggots I really respond to that noise of the bait going in down the middle I think this one's just tucked in the wing Come on, Mr. F1. Yeah, just caught him underneath. If I do start getting a few too many foul lookers, I'll just swap to tap in, say, three to five maggots in, because there's definitely a few fish there. And that light rig that's just dotted right down and presented correctly, getting a nice little left one every chuck. So a little nugget ball, and you can pick that up in the little flexi pot, just force it in there. Chuck out of 10 maggots down the middle again. And off we go. So we've had a lovely day catching some fish across on ground bait. Um, the light's starting to change. There's the odd bubble coming up down the middle. So it's now time to have a look at catching them bonus fish late run down the middle on maggots. 
So rig makeup, we've got 016 Power Micron mainline again. Uh, we've now got a 0.2 XL carbon in say four foot of water with six number 11 strung out through the bottom two foot of the rig, no, 18 inches of the rig with a 010 Power Micron hook length with a MXC5 in a size 18 again, so a nice fine wire pattern. Um, exactly the same hook baits, maggot in a pinky or double maggot. Um, and we're just looking at mimicking our loose feed that we're feeding. We want a nice natural slow falling hook bait to say just, just fall those crafty F1s into taking a hook bait. Let's talk about this short line in a little bit more depth. So it's normally a line, just feed a few maggots and lay that rig in. So it's normally a line, you can either start straight, straight away on in your match, as in feeding some pellets there, but that's not something we wanted to do today. Um, once you've caught them early pellet fish, then changing it to a maggot line for late on, that's one straight away. So we're just gonna chuck few maggots so there's one waiting for us but it's not an area of the peg generally that the fish will sit there all day and want to eat they're normally wanting to sit across out the way in say three foot of water five foot of water dependent on the depths of the lake and it's a case of when the lights change in the f1s feel oh we're gonna have a little bit of a chomp now and that that area of the lake down the middle that you've prepped all day feeding same maggots every time you're shipping in and out just ringing the dinner bell it's a great way of catching a lake runner fish it's a nice stamp f1 it can be really productive and really boost your weight and it's just a case of stick a double maggot on again there just building the peg throughout the day, say, say, just leaving it alone, keeping it fed every time you're shipping and out. And you can normally have some tan, 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 you can normally have some signs that there's a few fish there, as in we've had a few bubbles come up. So you can clearly see there's the odd fish there. So we chucked a handful of maggots, well, say a handful, 20 maggots in. And then we're just nicely laying in our light carbon rig at the sight angle so it's going to mimic the loose feed that we've thrown in there as well and then we're just waiting for a nice little dink on a float and once we hook one or if i miss say a big line bite like we did there just a case of getting say eight 20 maggots and then we're going to flick our hook bait past it i'm going to mimic the fall of the loose feed offerings and this hopefully you can pick them bubbles up on the camera as well so there's definitely some down there and so the depth that we're fishing in today is about four and a half foot, anywhere between, just pricked one, so feed a few maggots again. Between four and eight foot is generally where you want to be. Um, distance wise, between a top kit and two, and a top kit and three, just where you can chuck it comfortably, um, and ideally in the deepest part of your peg. We spoke about earlier, um, finding that harder, cleaner bottom. If you're gonna fish, on the area that they're not used to being fed on, if you like, you can have issues with them potentially digging the bottom out. Missed a bite there. Definitely a few about today. And we'll lay that rig in slightly when catching it. Flick it past. Um, yeah, you can have issues with them digging out the silt and potentially foul looking loads and stuff like that, which you don't want. So they're coming here to eat. And you can generally feed a lot more bait on this short line than you could anywhere else in your peg because again, they are looking to come to this point to eat. They're not, they're not there because they live there potentially. They're there because they want to be fed. They want their chicken nuggets on the, the end of the day. Because they're crafty things at the best of time and it's just making the most of those windows of when they want to feed. So the ones we've caught down the middle, 
they've generally been that little bit bigger than the ones that have been across as well. Just such a lovely way of fishing. So we're going to grab two maggots, red and a white. We ship out again. We're going to flick a few maggots out and then flick that rig past, get that natural fall on the rig. And just as it starts to straighten up, you can drop the rig down. So it's really important once you've hooked one as well to feed again, just so you've got your next fish waiting for you. Just lining them up when they're wanting to eat. It's got that float dotted right down. It's got a really visible tip on it, so we'll see any indication. Sometimes you're not looking for a pull, pull under, it's just literally a wobble on the float and there'll be a nice big F1 on. That was a movement there. A wobble. Missed the bite, so a few maggots in again. Flip the rig past. And that nice natural fall on the light strung out rig. And it doesn't overly matter if they're not pinpoint accurate as I, I say, falling on like a six inch round square. If you've as long as uh, even on a windy day, say unlock a car bonnet, that's that's more than good enough. It's a bit the odd silly bite now. And if you are getting the odd silverfish as well, or getting played with silverfish, don't be scared to up your feed, even in the depths of winter. Um, you could potentially feed a couple of points of bait there, because as I say, that is the area that they're coming to feed in. Um, of the areas of peg, they're just there because they live there more than anything. Late in the day, they come for a little, little chomp down the middle on maggots. Just keeping an eye on the time, so for more than five minutes, they cast without having any indication, or it'd be a case of just refeeding your peg and starting again as in flicking. So we put one there, just up the feed on that lot. So probably 40 maggots in there, I guess, and we'll hopefully have a fish waiting for us once we've played this one. Shipping back to a top kit. Yep, nice nice little chunky F1. Let's take our time with it, we don't want him to come off. Yeah, nice damn fish. See how lightly hooked they are, that one's just pinged out in the net. But just changing our feeding pattern slightly and upping it. We've got a fish in the net as opposed to one coming off. So double maggot again. It's really good just to play back with your hook baits on the day as well. As I say today they're being quite active and they're wanting a little bit more feed than normal. So that bit bigger bait of the double maggot seems to be working. Whereas normally I like to fish say a maggot and a pinky or double maggot when it's really hard. It's amazing what a difference it makes. So we've just flung some more maggots out there, straighten that rig up and hopefully there's another one waiting. There we go, straight away there. And then another 40, 50 maggots. Much cleaner, faster bite there as well. Just up in that feed, just controlled them and stopped them going. Silly. Much bigger fish than what we were catching earlier in the day across. And bigger than snow, it's the end of the day. And it's a safer time for them to feed just as the light starts to change. So let's make this the last fish of the day it's been a lovely day's fishing um, it's really demonstrated say a generic winter snake light approach not just here at Packington but venues up and down the country as I say it'd be like my go-to methods if you like so this one it really isn't giving up it's a nice big f1 to win man might be the biggest fish of the day um, yeah I hope you found the the tips and tricks useful Please remember to subscribe to the Fish Matrix 
page. I can barely hold him up, he's that big. Look at that lovely golden F1, the biggest one of the day. Slide him gently back once we've unlocked him.